Let's get right into it, man. I'm not going to waste time. Let's start this thing off, man. Like I said from the start, let's talk about Mr. Ja Morant. Who the hell does Ja Morant think he is? Let's get right into it. Now, shout out to the Memphis Grizzlies. I'm not going to sit up here and play this game with them this morning. Memphis has won 11 straight games. Looking sharp. Now, I don't know if it's because people hate LeBron and the Lakers so much or if they're truly happy and excited for the success that Memphis is having. But I would like to remind everyone in the National Basketball Association of one key thing. We are still in the regular season. Now, Ja Morant, I'm not going to hold you. I like Ja over Zion. I'm a fan of Ja. I see the potential. Last eight games, Ja Morant has been balling, averaging 29 points a game, six boards, six assists. He's shooting 53 percent from the field 52 from the three-point line this is over memphis's last eight games he's averaging these numbers these guys have just won 11 in a row memphis has won some big games they beat the lakers twice i know they beat golden state they beat some quality teams but what i'm seeing here is that this whole attitude of what have you done for me lately is spilling over and to now, John Morant and the Memphis Grizzlies being favorites to win the Larry O'Brien trophy this year? Are you guys kidding me? Like, I got to talk to the bosses. I watched John Morant stick his chest out how he did this little kid after he scored now. John Morant went crazy against Golden State. Then remember the little kid stuck his hand out, but he had on a Golden State jersey. Now, John Morant, I did hear that he sent the kid an autograph signed jersey and all that. But he just mean mugged this little boy. And I'm looking at Ja like, wait a minute, brother. We all seen what happened to the last Ja that stuck his chest out thinking that he was that man. Y'all remember what happened to Ja Rule? I'm not trying to play Ja Morant, but I need Ja Morant to fall back and calm down because this guy, we only in the regular season, he is showing off. I really don't understand. I am a fan of the regular season, but I'm also a bigger fan of reality. I'm about to bring my brother D Money on here. He's going to join me this morning for a couple of minutes. But before I bring him more, man, I just really need to know what the hell is going on with Ja Morant and this. I can't call it overnight success because he's been grinding. And now, you know, the grind is starting to pay off, but it's just the regular season. And the fans of the National Basketball Association, I feel, is just doing entirely too much. Great numbers he's putting up. But I'm not jacking John Morant right now as being some goddamn favorite or someone that um, is going to lead the Memphis Grizzlies to some goddamn championship. Let me explain something to you guys real quick before I bring my man D on. Do you guys know if the playoffs ended right now, Memphis would be in the playoffs? However, they would have to play the first round, I believe, against the Denver Nuggets with Jamal Murray playing and healthy. So you want to tell me that Memphis, as constructed, will be able to beat Denver with the uh, reigning MVP, Jokic, beat them in a seven-game series, fine. If they advance past Denver, then they would have to battle and beat Golden State. So you're telling me that in a seven-game series now, even though John them looked sharp over Golden State the other night, They'll beat Golden State in the seven in the seven game series in the second round of the Western Conference Finals. I mean, in the playoffs, just to then have to go to the finals and play the Phoenix Suns. So then you got John Morant and Memphis beating Phoenix now in the Western Conference Finals in the seven game series, just to only have to now play Brooklyn or at least Milwaukee in the NBA Finals. I just cannot gather and understand what makes you guys think that the Memphis Grizzlies, even though they're on a hot streak right now, that they're actually built for this. I don't get it. Let me bring my man D Money up on here, man. We're going to have to talk D. You know what the hell is happening here. I see you on here. Yeah. Twice, so let me see if I can get rid of one of these. What's up with you, D? What's going on? What's going on, bro? How you, oh, man, how, how you doing this morning? I'm not doing good at all, man. I am not doing good at all. I just got, <laughs> I just, I just beat this COVID thing. I'm watching the Memphis Grizzlies win 11 straight. I'm watching everyone shit on LeBron and my Lakers, and and I'm watching John Morant oh, stick his chest out. Are you a John Morant fan? Um, I, I like him a lot, actually. 
Um, I think, to me, he's the closest thing to young Derrick Rose when he first came to the league. You're comparing John Morant to Derrick Rose from uh-huh. what aspect as far as talent as far as speed as far as production as far as just just strictly athleticism and uh as far as the skill set um i don't think the step is as quick as Derek was in his prime but he definitely is as explosive and, job around is um, absolutely explosive I, I agree with that i agree yeah. Um, I still think he's still a little wet behind the ears. You know what I'm saying? He's still a little young. The whole team is young, actually. I think uh, give him about a year or two. Okay. And maybe add, like, maybe one more veteran piece to him. Right. I think they'll be where they need to be. But, like, him, Dylan, and Jaron Jackson, they're not there just yet. I think, yeah. Do you have a... Next two years, I think they'll be really, really good. Do you have a problem with Ja sticking his chest out? Uh, you know, when you're playing in this game, there's only a, a, a select amount of people in the world that can play in the association. Do you have uh-huh. a problem with Ja, the way he's boasting, the way he's talking that talk like he's that guy right now? No. I mean, uh, if you don't think he's that guy, you need to stop him. But ain't nobody, ain't nobody really stopping him for real. So, no, nah, I don't got no problem with it. But my thing about it, D, I feel like we're putting too much mustard on the regular season. We still got a whole half of basketball to go when it comes to this year. Mm-hmm. And I'm hearing people put Memphis almost at the top or a favorite to come out of the Western Conference. Oh, yeah. you got to calm down on that. I ain't, I ain't ready to say that just yet. I'm not jacking I- that, bro. <laughs> Now, do you feel like Ja Morant, the way he's playing right now, is he a solidified all-star at least for this season? Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, I think it, he has to keep it up. I mean, we still got another half of the season to kind of dictate that. Right. But um, I think he's really, really close to to already kind of hitting that. Like, as far as all-star, I think he's already there. You know what I mean? Okay. Um, now, I'll put it like this. MVP conversation is going to come into play because I already hear people putting them in MVP category. MVP is only going to come into play depending on where they place in the playoff race. If he as well as as like well a, as don't forget neither. Not to cut you off, D, but we also got to take in consideration that injuries, all these other things are going to play a factor when we decide who's going to be the MVP at the end of the year. Because uh-huh. I don't think as constructed, if everyone was healthy. If all these teams were able to come back, if we saw Kyrie, you know, play home games, we're going to get into that topic in a second. If the Lakers uh-huh. were able to find a way to get it together, I don't see John Morant being a front runner for the MVP. AJ in the oh. building from out London, man. AJ, if you can hear us, man, um, let me know what you think about John Morant and the Memphis Grizzlies. They just tied the franchise record winning their 11th straight game um, the other night versus the uh, Timberwolves. If you're there, AJ, what you think about? Uh, a job around. I know my guy's out in London, so I'm not sure if he's able to hear. Um, AJ, if you with us, come back in. I'm gonna go ahead and remove you. Just come back in. But um, I, no, I man, think- I got respect for him. I got respect for him. I feel everything you're saying, D. But the way I'm just seeing everyone just ingratiate Memphis as being a favorite blows my mind. Well, I put it like this: if you if 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 the Memphis can hold a at least a fourth seed by the time it's time for playoffs, okay, and 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 Ja is still on this kind of run, I I can see him as a dark horse for uh, MVP. MVP, yeah. Now, what if Memphis make the play-in tournament? What if they because last year I think they went in the did they they lost to Golden State or did they beat Golden State last year? I know they had they a run-in the with the they Wolves. They lost to Golden State in overtime. Okay. So if they make the playoffs, or if they make the play-in tournament, does that help uh-huh. or hurt John Morant's chances of being an MVP? Uh, too tough man. to call right now? Yeah, yeah, it's too early to call. It would depend. AJ. Like, it would, they would have to, they would have to, like... Fall, fall, like it would have to be like I don't know. 
it, it would depend. Like if it was, if it's like injuries, cool. But if it's like a losing streak and they just went and this all this whole time it's like a flash in the pan. Right. Yeah, that's going to dock against him. So let me ask you this, because now uh-huh. we're talking. Let's talk about Brooklyn real quick with Kyrie Irving. So now the talk is if the Brooklyn Nets are willing to pay the fines. Kyrie may able to actually play some home games for the Nets before the year is out. And when I counted up the amount of money that the Brooklyn Nets would have to kick out with all these fines in totality, it's like five to ten thousand dollars. It's like it's not a lot of money at all. What do you think the chances of Kyrie actually playing home games before this year is out? Hey, listen, man. The the NBA better hope that don't happen. Y'all you already know how I feel. You know what I'm saying? You you you're still they, sold they, on they the Brooklyn hope Nets. That don't happen. They, they they better keep them out. Cause if they're healthy, hey man, you might go ahead and book it, killer. Go ahead and book it. I don't I, I don't I don't I'm not jacking that. I'm not jacking. <laughs> I'm still not sold on Brooklyn. And and I heard you mention about Milwaukee. Milwaukee beat the mess out of who did they beat? Golden State the other yesterday. They blew Golden State out. Yeah, beat the. Beat the stuffing out of them. Do you take um, that as an upset? Because I called it to be a blowout. I'm not sold on Clay okay. Thompson. So the problem is sometimes you know the Styles make fights. Uh, Milwaukee just matches up well with Golden State right now, and Golden State doesn't have the bigs to to match up with Milwaukee. So they could technically just play a bully ball, and you know when when G.I. Giannis can get to the hole whenever he wants to. And you have nobody right. stopping him, like a, say a Wiseman or, uh, or Draymond to kind of slow him down. You're just going to have issues, especially even with having Clay back. Clay's still not like he's probably about a good seventy percent Clay. He's not a hundred percent Clay. Oh my God! You know? Do you keep making excuses for Clay Thompson? I'm not. I'm not. I'm just telling you what. I'm just telling you what. It, what it, how how I see it. Oh, Clay, and, Clay. And even still, even with all that going on, it's okay. still Giannis and and the way that the Milwaukee plays, it would still be a problem. Now, no, I'm I'm the type, you know, I believe in accountability. Everybody done got quiet since Steph went, done cooled down, like he do every year. Around, you know, what I'm saying he he done cooled down, right? But you know. We 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 not gonna talk about that, you know what I'm saying? Everybody was just so rah rah, and he's gonna be MVP, and all this other stuff. And, you know, we we ain't there yet, you know. Now AJ, he's in the live chat. He said he think that the Brooklyn Nets need Kyrie Irving, but he hasn't been around long enough, and it's gonna take them a while until they get into that mode of possibly winning a championship. How much time do you think Brooklyn has now for the chemistry factor? before this shit is all over with. Because mind you, James Harden and Kyrie Irving's contract is coming to an end. If if you can get Kyrie by all-star break, they'll be they'll be just fine. So you're Five telling minutes. Brooklyn, you're telling Brooklyn to go ahead, pay the fines to get to get Kyrie to play home games. And unless, you feel like by the all-star man, break. Unless you could talk that man into uh to taking that vaccine which probably is not going to be the case. Um, I mean, what is ten? You said ten thousand dollars. It's. I think it's like a totality of maybe like between five to ten to twenty thousand dollars in totality of the amount of fines that Brooklyn will have to pay for the home games. But you brought up the whole vaccination thing with Kyrie. Why the hell would Kyrie Irving now take the vaccine when you look at the beef that they had? He basically won. Yeah. No. 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 I feel you. But um, I know there was some rumor that he's supposed to be taking some plant-based vaccine or something okay. stupid like that that Canada is working on that he might consider. But um, I mean, you know, I I feel like you know, depends on how bad you think you want the championship. If you if you uh, if you want to go hard at it this year, go ahead and pay the money and. If, if Kyrie's still not, you know, what you want him to be as far as complying with, you know, you're only doing it for one year. 
That's basically you you all I'm saying. Year, just go that's, ahead and do it. That's my thing. You do not, if you are a Brooklyn Nets fan, you do not have forever to play around with the chemistry thing. Remember, uh, Kyrie and KD came together last year, and a whole mm -hmm. year went by because of injury. They didn't even play together. Yeah. Now you're trying to ingratiate James Harden. So let me ask you this, D. If you bring all three of these guys on the basketball court to play a mm -hmm. substantial amount of time, who do you have running the point guard at this point? Do you put that in responsibility of Kyrie's hand, or do you give that responsibility to James Harden oh, and no, allow Kyrie Harden. to play more off the ball? It's still James Harden. Uh, James okay. Harden uh, is, the, is the point guard of that team. He said it last year. He said that, nah, he's, he's the guy. You know what I'm saying? He don't. Look as 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 skilled as Kyrie is, Kyrie is a great ISO player. Right. He doesn't necessarily see the court the way that say a um Harden does. So being that that's the case, um, nah, you gotta get you gotta let Harden run the show. Right. Okay. So and then you got the young guys there and I think them getting Patty Mills to come off the bench is like a godsend for them. Patty you know? Mills have been unbelievable this year, bro. Coming off yeah. of the bench, being able to score. I've seen him, what, 20-point games, 30-point games? Like, the way he played yep. against the Lakers this year, Patty yep. Mills is on his job. There's no denying that. But when you look at the yeah. competition in the East, those guys are stacked. Milwaukee got a nice ball club. Miami got a nice ball club. Like, I don't think uh -huh. it's going to be a cakewalk for Brooklyn to get to the NBA Finals. Then you look at the moves that the Knicks made yesterday. The, the young New York Knicks, they made a trade. They paired up Cam Reddish back with uh, R.J. Barrett to play in New York with that trade um, with the Atlanta Hawks yesterday. So the New York Knicks are trying to make some noise, you know, going into the second yeah, half of the season. Stupid! I didn't, I didn't see the point of. I don't, I didn't see the point of that for Atlanta. Yeah, I don't know what Atlanta's did. doing. I don't know what Atlanta's doing. <laughs> I don't what? know what Atlanta's doing. <laughs> I, I, okay, all right. Now, the Lakers yeah. had reportedly offered Atlanta two second-round picks for Cam Reddish, and Atlanta turned uh -huh. it down. Do you think Cam made better made out better going to New York than playing with LeBron and, and the Lakers? Uh, uh, it depends on what Thibodeau um, sees in him mm -hmm. and what he has him doing. That's that's mainly my issue, um, as far as that goes, because Thibodeau is very, you know, it took him a while to get to get Kemba Kemba right. So Kemba's playing, just, put, Kemba's playing lights out. Kemba's playing lights yeah. out. And I re, I remember you and I talked about the whole Kemba Walker experiment, and when he had got benched, you know, was this thing just a failure? Should we just call it quits on that? But he was able to find a way to bounce back. So I'm impressed with Kemba and, and how the Knicks are progressing. I, like you said, I'm I'm confused on what Atlanta was thinking in this whole situation. They traded Cam Reddish, they traded Solomon Hill, and a 2025 second round pick to the Brooklyn Nets. Um, well, via Brooklyn to the New York Knicks for Kevin Knotts and a protected 2022 first round pick. So Atlanta, to me, who was in the playoffs, who won a series. Look like they kind of in rebuilding mode. I don't really know what the hell they got going yeah, on. Yeah, I don't. I don't know. I don't know what's going on. They're not. I. I guess they figure they can't beat the top three teams, four teams in the uh, on the East anyway. Right. So you might as well just kind of junk it up. Because I mean, you know, let's be honest. I mean, as good as a uh, old Trey is, I mean, he can't do nothing with not uh, by himself. Power. No. No. Can't do nothing with a full power of Brooklyn or Milwaukee or Chicago, you know. It's especially in a seven game series, and I totally forgot you brought up the Chicago Bulls. The way they playing, the, the Bulls are playing lights out. Demar Derozan playing unbelievable basketball right uh -huh. now. Now the current NBA All Star uh, votes are in, or they going in. The fans are doing the votes right now. Um, as of right now, the Western All Star starters, according to the fan vote, we got Steph Curry. Ja Morant, LeBron James, Andrew Wiggins, and Nikola Jokic as the all-star starters for the West. Does that sound pretty interesting, right? What do you think? Yeah, about that? Wiggins? Yeah, that's interesting. Go ahead. Wiggins and Joker. And then on the east side of things, we got Trey Young, who we just spoke on, DeMar DeRozan, Kevin Durant, Giannis Antetokounmpo, and Joel Embiid 
rounds out the five right now for the East as far as the mm-hmm. fan vote goes. When you look at those two uh, squads, as far as starters, who do you think have the best package, the East or the West? Uh, the East. The East? Yeah, the East. He's got, got three guys you can't stop. Giannis, KD, and who else? And, 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 well, look, shit, when you look at it, he might got four. Who the hell is stopping DeMar? <laughs> who can stop Joel? Like, those guys are balling. Yeah. yeah. Those guys are balling. Jo- Joel has definitely been a different animal this year. So, I don't know. We'll, we'll, we'll have to see. I I, I got to see what's going to happen with Ben Simmons this year. And uh, I don't know what's going to go on with this whole Dame situation because I heard that's a situation as well, too. Dame is done. Dame is done. Dame Dame is about to have surgery. And I think what I was saying, I felt like Dame and Lillard was just trying to wait around and see what the hell Kawhi Leonard was going to do. Because I felt like he might have tried to go and play with Kawhi and PG. But PG is Man. done for the year. Kawhi's not coming back. I think Dame is about to shut it down. And we'll just have to figure out the whole Lillard story probably next year. If, if you're the Clippers, what do you what do you think about the whole thing with Kawhi? Like you, you, at this point, you gotta feel like you've been cheated. Absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> because not only is Kawhi Leonard not being productive on the basketball court, when you look at it in totality, he's not showing any leadership quality. He's not no. recruiting anyone to come to LA. You know, he's. You don't see that presence on the on the sidelines, or, or you know, I'm not in the locker room, but you know, I just don't see that leadership quality from Kawhi that they would need from him, even if he's not on the basketball court. Mm. So yeah, yeah, I don't, yeah, I don't know. It's, I, I, you got to feel cheated, man. And then uh, last, last guy I wanted to bring up to you, uh, Zion. So, so this is just got, you know, just speculation. I, I don't think it's probably not going to happen. But what, what, what are your odds on the fact that maybe New Orleans goes ahead and, uh, try to get rid of Zion. When we look at the history of what the Pelicans front office have done, I think they're too stupid and I think they're too selfish to get rid of Zion while they have the opportunity. Zion is one of the most overrated players that we are going to see in the history of the NBA. If we could do this draft all over again, I would pick Ja Morant 20 times over Zion. But now New I Orleans is all... I was picking ja you, you picked him as well? Yeah, I was picking John Moran beforehand. Yeah, Mainly I just, because the, I knew the weight was going to be a problem. I was like, man, as soon as that man, as soon as he gets hurt, if if his ankle or anything with his leg gets hurt, it's going to be an ongoing problem because he cannot keep his weight under control. It's ridiculous, man. It, it's ridiculous. It's yeah, sad. Yeah. And I think these issues that Zion is having, they self-inflicted. I'm not saying yeah. he just sits around and doesn't exercise or work out, but when you gain in weight like that, these are things that you can work on, especially if you're not playing. Yeah. So, yeah, I'm not I'm not sold on Zion. I feel like um, New Orleans as an organization is not smart enough to make the move that really needs to be made because they have so much time and money invested in him already. They just going to have mm-hmm. to suffer and deal with this. If they would have yeah, kept looking, Lonzo Ball and kept that young nucleus, they'd have been all right. But now that they kind of split that up. real busty right now. It's looking I, real I busty. say that. That's a fact. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's how it's going down. So, D, I appreciate you, man. I'm about to get up out of here in a minute, but I appreciate oh. you chopping it up with me, man, as always. No Salute problem, to you always, and bro. the baby girl. Happy New Year yes, to sir. you. And we'll chop it up again later on this week. Yes, sir. All right, G. Peace. That was my guy, D Money, man. Salute to him. So, yeah, man, it's just been a crazy last 24 hours in the NBA. Like I said, I do not want to sit up here and shit on Mr. Ja Morant. He has been doing his thing. I am a fan of Ja Morant, but I feel like he is doing entirely too much too early, and we are putting too much mustard on a regular season sandwich, and it doesn't taste good, not to me. So I need more time. I need Ja Morant to do a little bit more. and um. You know, we'll see how that happens. I just still, regardless of the success that Jai's having, I don't see the Memphis Grizzlies being a damn favorite coming out of the Western Conference this year. There's too many hurdles to climb. I don't care about the 11-game winning streak that they're on right now. This is still a regular season. 
We got half of the or we got half of the NBA out with injuries, key players. We got the other half still haven't got anything together when you talk about chemistry. So we got a lot of basketball left to play. And I'm just not sold on John Morant and Memphis being the team to beat or one of the teams to beat in the NBA, much less the Western Conference. We've still got a lot and a long way to go. As far as Kyrie Irving go and the Brooklyn Nets, like the Brooklyn Nets, they would be a fool to sit up here and play big bank, little bank. I think at the end of the day, they will kick out the fines. They will do whatever they have to do to get Kyrie on the court for the home games. And when you look at it, D-Money, he brought up the uh, whole idea about Kyrie possibly taking the vaccine or doing another type of vaccination. I don't see why Kyrie, unless it's for personal reasons, why he would bother to do anything because he really won. He said he wasn't going to get vaccinated. Brooklyn at first said they didn't want a part-time player, so they was not going to allow Kyrie to play at all. Then because of so many injuries, they had to ask for him to come back for at least the home games. Now that he's playing, I mean, for the road games, now he's back. He's playing on the road, playing pretty decent basketball, more COVID health and safety protocol issues with the NBA. So more players are out. The New York mandate, if they pay the fines, they can get him to play in Brooklyn. So I think at the end of the day, Brooklyn has no choice but to cough up the money, get Kyrie playing on the basketball court sooner than later because his contract is coming up. James Harden contract is coming up. And we really just don't know um, what's next or what's what. So we're going to have to see, man, but you guys are now rocking with the best. This is the best of seven sports talk. I'm seven Mitchell, man. Make sure y'all like, comment, and subscribe. We are live streaming from a lot of different places this morning, man. A YouTube channel, of course, best of seven sports talk. Make sure y'all subscribe. I'm also on Bego, man. Salute to all the listeners out there on Bego Live, man. Y'all can check me out on Bego at seven Mitchell. Salute to y'all. Hope you guys have a great day. Salute to everyone in the association. Y'all let me know what y'all think about Ja Morant and this early success of the Memphis Grizzlies, as well as the Brooklyn Nets and the Kyrie Irving situation. What the hell is going on? Are the Brooklyn Nets going to play big bank, little bank, or are they going to be selfish with this money, or are they going to kick it out and allow Kyrie to play home games in an effort to finally get a championship in Brooklyn? Y'all let me know, man, but you guys are now rocking with the best. This is the best of seven sports talk. I'm Seven Mitchell. I'm about to get up out of here. Y'all be good. Peace. All right, man. Peace to my NBA family. It's your host, Seven Mitchell, with the best of seven sports talk. I just wanted to take this time out to say thank you to each and every one of you guys for so much support for the podcast. I hope you guys are really enjoying some of the outside the box angles we take, bringing you in these NBA storylines. Please don't forget to like and share. Most importantly, rate the podcast. You can follow us on social media. All the links will be in the description. And if you would like to contribute to the Best of 7 Sports Talk platform, we have merchandise available, as well as links for the merch and donations will be all in the description. Once again, thank each and every one of you guys in the NBA community for supporting the show. This is Seven Mitchell with the Best of 7 Sports Talk. Let's talk some NBA action.